We're going to go now to Francis D'Souza, CEO of Illumina, a company that identifies and tracks COVID variants through genomic sequencing. Good morning to you. Hello there. From what you are seeing, um, the $2 billion that U.S. taxpayers just helped allocate towards improving sequencing in this country, is America better now than we were at the start of this pandemic at figuring out exactly where the virus and the variants are? Yeah, we're making uh, progress, and we were in a lot different position than we were at the beginning of the pandemic. And certainly even a year ago, we were sequencing very little in terms of the positives that we were seeing in this country. But over the last year, we started to see sequencing infrastructure being rolled out. Uh, and now, if you look at the course of the all of 2021, we're probably we've probably sequenced over the course of 2020 on about 3% of the positives that we've seen this year. Now, best practice is to do between 5 and 10%. Uh, but if you look at the last three months, we're now in that 5 to 10% range. So I think overall, we're starting to get the right amount of sequencing done in the U.S. The challenge is that it's very variable across the states. And so you have some states that are close to 30 percent of positives, and you have some states that are closer to 1 percent. And so overall, I think uh, we have the capacity we need. It's just that we clearly have blind spots in parts of the country where we need to do more. And to that point, in the United Kingdom, within 48 hours of uh, the, the first cases, uh, they knew um, you know, after South Africa sounded the alarm, the UK detected they had Omicron on their shores. Here in the United States, it was out of Minnesota. It took a week of time to pass between when the patient was tested and state health officials in Minnesota confirmed it. Why are we slower? Isn't that more dangerous? It absolutely is, and you want to be you want to be ahead of this. There's no question that the UK specifically uh, has been one of the leaders in terms of rolling rolling out a a global. Uh, genomics epidemiology infrastructure. Uh, so they have been doing surveillance uh, since April of 2020. So they were one of the first countries in the world to recognize the value of doing genomic sequencing mm -hmm. of the positives, and identifying how the virus was mutating. And so they started in, in April of 2020. And frankly, not many other countries followed until December of 2020, when we started to see new, uh, new variants emerge. And it became clear that there was huge value in understanding how this virus was right. mutating, that we needed to understand it so we could track how it was spreading, but also to know if the tools we were using to fight the pandemic, the vaccines, the diagnostics, the therapies, whether they were still going to be effective. Right. In terms of how this virus mutated, there's speculation that it either jumped back and forth between animals and humans or that there was something unique to uh, its mutation within immunocompromised individuals. Do you have any insight into why Omicron seems to be so uniquely threatening? Yeah, what really is surprising about the, uh, the genome of, of this variant is that it is so heavily mutated. So we have over 50 new mutations, 30 of which are in the S gene, which, which makes the S protein. And, and that's important. But but the fact that there are so many that we haven't seen before coming from a virus that only mutates two to three times a month tells us that it's been somewhere mutating for a long time and we haven't seen it. And so there are a number of hypotheses. One, it could have been uh, as part of a chronic illness that somebody who was perhaps immunocompromised had over a year, and so they weren't ever really able to clear the virus, uh, and so they had it and it was mutating, and then for some reason uh, it started transmitting again over the last couple of weeks, or it could have been, as you said, you know, transmitted to an animal, it uh, mutated there, and then come back into humans, or it could have been uh, circulating in a part of the global population that's uh, just not being sequenced. And so we're trying to figure out you know, where it was for so long mutating, uh, undetected. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's important is that the mutations we're seeing, the 30 mutations in the, on the uh, S gene are important because the S gene codes for the S protein, and that's important for two reasons. One, that is how the virus interacts with human cells and gets into human cells. And, right. and we've seen with other variants of concerns that certain mutations make uh, variants more transmissible. And so there's an indication, and we're seeing that with some of the early data, that this variant might be more transmissible. But the right. second reason it's important is that the uh, S protein is actually a target for some of the vaccines. And so the question now is, is it mutated enough that it would escape some of the vaccines? Right, and we will be watching what the South African scientists find on that, uh, of course. In this country though, do you think there is a national strategy to go along with the money, we talked about the two billion, uh, to improve sequencing? 
I think we're starting to put it together. Clearly there wasn't at the beginning of the pandemic. And there are lots of elements of a national strategy that are essential. So, you know, one sort of understanding, you know, what are we trying to shoot for in terms of a percentage of positives that, that we want to sequence? Two, how is that going to happen? So how are the samples going to go from, you know, clinics where testing is happening to labs that can do the sequencing and those connections needed to be, to mm-hmm. be made? And then there's got to be more work around, you know, how yeah. is the data going to be shared? And so all of that, it, I think there are ideas and they're being put together, okay. but there's still work being done to get it together. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. D'Souza, for your time this morning.